Let's get started right now with news you can use. Another canary in the mine shaft. Yep, that's exactly what we got going on. We talked about one yesterday, and for those of you who weren't here yesterday, listen to yesterday's video. We went back through the, the history of that term, canary in the mine shaft. It goes back to the early 1900s when miners were having problems dying unexpectedly uh, when they were mining coal below ground. And what happens is methane is abundant and is generated in the process of digging underground. Methane's odorless and colorless, and these miners would just all of a sudden keel over and die. Uh, they didn't know, but they were inhaling methane and killed them quickly. Uh, they figured out, somebody figured out that canaries are more susceptible to methane than are humans, and they took a bunch of canaries in cages and stuck them around different places in the mines, and when the canaries keeled over, they knew to hightail it back to the surface. And so it was an early warning system. Essentially, that's what it indicates is it's something that happens before everybody else sees it, feels it, hears it, touches it, that kind of thing. Yesterday, we talked about the fact that uh, the car payment lobby or interest in the United States is suffering right now at one of the highest levels they've ever had with unpaid monthly car payments. It was something around 5%, if I, I remember correctly, of uh, the payments on vehicles out there are delinquent at least two months or more. That's a good indication for the housing stock uh, that down the road, the housing stock will have the same kind of situation where people can't make their house payments, so on and so forth. Keep in mind that cars are the second largest purchase that people typically make. First, of course, being their house. But and the way that the theory goes is they start with the small stuff and they cut out uh, everything for up to energy, uh, and then it becomes cars and it becomes the house payment itself. So if you look further down the chain, towards the closer to the, the, the basic economic activities that happen around, you can get a good feel what's going to happen typically 30 to 180 days you know what it is and one of these came up yesterday this was the ap i did a report on some hidden canary in the mine shaft that i hadn't even thought about but they talked about it it's demand for cardboard boxes and when you think about it, it's pretty brilliant uh it's way down on the scale in terms of one of the first things to happen before anything gets going uh people will buy from amazon or they'll they'll order something online and have it shipped and also boxes uh, contain basically all the goods that come to retail businesses suppliers grocery stores, things like that. And if the demand for cardboard boxes is down, that means that's one of the first signs that other things are gonna be down too. So in other words, there's not as many heads of lettuce being shipped uh, because they're not buying as much cardboard. And so then there's gonna be a lettuce, either a lettuce shortage, or there's the demand is reduced on lettuce. So they're, they're backing this up. They're not shipping as many boxes for heads of lettuce, which means less people are eating salads, which means you know, less people have money. And that's the first indication of things are gonna happen. But uh, it's been 15 years since cardboard demand has been this low. Now you think back to 2008, that's 15 years ago now, uh, when the demand for cardboard was this low. The population of this country was something like 10% less than it is now. It's like 30 million more people or 25 million more people. Plus in that 15 year period of time, more people have gotten acclimated to buying online, doing things like that. And all of these Amazon shipments and so on and so forth, you know, are packaged in cardboard. So it is a broad demand when you get a big increase in population and you still have the total demand for cardboard going down. That's probably a pretty good indication of some underlying severe economic problem that we're not seeing just yet. I mean, everybody's talking about recession. Personally, I believe we're already in what, what I would call a rolling recession, which is, and I've been through one of these as well. You see that the demand go up and down and up and down. It's not like it just drops drops off and stays. But we're seeing that early indications in the housing market. That's the case. Uh, last week, for the first time in about two months, we were getting multiple offers on a property. This week, we're only three days into it, but we're already seeing that drop off again. So it, it is a, and I see it in other industries too that I'm involved in, where demand's high, then it's low, and it's high again. And, it, and it, it is being manipulated, of course, by the Federal Reserve. The Fed, like I said, is uh, 23 minutes from now is gonna announce the increase, we expect it to be 25 basis points, a quarter of 1% in the Fed funds rate. And what the most important thing is going to be to see how the comments that Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, how his comments are laid out. If, if it's more of an aggressive, hostile style, you know, bullish type thing, we're going to see more increases. Uh, if it's more calm, collected, dispassionate you know, type thing, we're probably going to see decreases rather than increases going forward. But I think we're probably in for one more raise after today. And by the way, today's 25 point basis point increase that I expect that's going to be, that's already baked into the marketplace. So it's not going to affect mortgage rates right now. It's already been priced. Mortgage rates have been dropping steadily for the last probably three weeks. Uh, 
Uh, but just in the last two days, mortgage demand, which had been going up for a few weeks, went down. So that's why I'm saying we're getting this rolling recession thing. And I think we're going to see that going forward. And, you know, it, it's not a bad thing because economies run on rolling cycles before they get into big upward cycles like we had the big downward cycles like we had back at the Great Depression. A market that's like this is not a bad market because if you're an astute business person, you will buy on the dips, sell on the highs. You know, that's, and we used to do that in the in fertilizer business. We would wait for one of these dips. We'd load up all of our tanks with fertilizer. And within a couple of weeks, the market would go back up. We'd empty them, sell them all off. And then we'd load up again when, when it got to the bottom. And we're in that kind of economy right now. It just feels like that. So I think uh, keep in mind that these canaries in the mine shaft, as it were, uh, are are solid indicators. They, this isn't a, a lot ado, a big ado about nothing. This is a big ado about a big thing. So it's going to affect something down the road. Um, so far, housing seems to be floating kind of on its own. It's a downward trend, uh, but it's not a free fall. Whereas some of these other things like cardboard down 8.4%, that's kind of a free fall. That's a big number, you know, especially to be down that over 2008. So it's, you know, it, it is a, a big, there's something out there going on. We don't know exactly what it is yet. Like I said, it's being manipulated by the Fed. So it's not true economics we're looking at here. It's a little bit of the voodoo economics things going on. All right, that's it for news you can use for today. Okay, thank you for watching. If you get a minute, I would love to hear your comments about what you think of these videos. Feel free also to put in any topics down here in the comment section of things that you'd like to hear me discuss. Any questions you want, go ahead and put in here. We'll make sure we get a video on it when we get time. And as always, please like and subscribe. Hit that ring the bell button as well to get notified every time there is a new video. Thanks a lot, everybody.